Hi, Mr. Kong, I'm gonna have to ask you to put the girl down and have you take a seat right over by those palm trees there. What was your plan here on this beautiful sunset with this of-age blonde girl? But here's the thing. You're a giant gorilla, and she's a small human female. How do you explain that? Well, you know, I have the transcripts right here. And it says you go under the name Wet Banana in Lang 76. And it says very clearly in this transcript that you want to have sex with this girl. How do you explain yourself? Well, there's something I gotta tell you here, Mr. Kong. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC Universal, and we're doing a story about monsters tr trying to have sexual encounters with girls. We already caught your buddy creature from the Black Lagoon and Frankenstein over there, so there's no need to hide anything. If there's anything you'd like to tell us, we'd be glad to hear it. Well, okay, we're gonna let you go, but keep in mind there's a couple of airplanes behind us that are ready to shoot you down. Unbelievable, guys! Holy crap! I found the cast of Team Four Star. This is amazing. We watch you guys all the time. This is yeah. We we love your show. I've been a fan of Dragon Ball Z all my life. So yeah, it's just cool to see you guys. How you guys doing? We're doing good. Guys, your first anime North? This is my first time in Vancouver, Toronto. What do you think? What do you think? Way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I know it's huge. This is like this is like the Woodstock of anime conventions. The Bespin Duel and the Duel of the Fates from the Star Wars Saga. Well, of course I had to include the Star Wars Saga on this list, so let's take a look and see why these two are the best in the entire saga. Well, hello, my little fellow Jacksonite. Nick Jackson? What the hell are you doing here? Did I just hear you say that the Bespin Duel and the Duel of Fates are the best duels of the entire Star Wars Saga? Yeah, what of it? Oh, come on. Everyone knows that the duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin in Revenge of the Sith was the greatest of the Star Wars saga. I mean, hell, why didn't you just consider any duels from the TCW series? They're better than any other sword duel on this list. Well, since you asked that question, Nick, allow me to explain. When it comes to the lightsaber duels in Star Wars, they're far from rare. Way too many of these duels to count. And honestly, it was hard to pick which one was the best. If I had to pick one from the original trilogy, I'd miss out on the incredible work in the prequels. If I had to pick one from the prequels, I would be pissing on the original trilogy. So instead, I decided to pick one from each trilogy. Well, what about the Force Awakens duel? Don't get ahead of yourself. I know a lot of you are probably wondering why I didn't include the duel from The Force Awakens. Well, if anything, I want to wait until that trilogy has run its course before I choose which duel is the best. And in case you're wondering why none of the duels from The Clone Wars or Rebels are included in this? Well, because, let's be fair, there could be a whole other list dedicated to the Star Wars lightsaber duels, but I'm not worrying about that now. So why do the Bespin and Naboo duels hold up the best? The fight in the original Star Wars was cool for the first time, but it doesn't hold up much in terms of the hardcore combat due to it being a battle between an old man and a mechanical being. However, the Bespin duel sticks out because it was the first time in the series that the hero and villain finally combated each other. For a lot of the first Star Wars fans, this was a long time coming and it definitely paid off. Luke is going into it out of rage and determination for his friends while Vader just toys with him. But as the fight goes on, it gets more physical between the two. Luke doesn't hold back from the need to tear Vader down, while Vader himself realizes he's equally matched and then unleashes his full power to end the conflict more quickly. And he gives Luke quite the spanking. Well, I guess that's what's needed when you're in a physical argument with your kid. I am the father. 
Alright, yes, I will admit, even though I'm not a big fan of the Duel of Fates and Bespin Duel, I can recognize how iconic they are in their own right. Even though Luke only trained with Yoda on Dagobah, he was going up against Darth Vader, arguably the most prolific lightsaber duelist of his day, and one of the greatest duelists of galactic history. Now to be fair, Return of the Jedi had probably the most emotional of the duels, but it all comes down to the impact and iconic tone to the fights in which the Bespin duel in Empire wins in that account. Now what about the Duel of the Fates and the Phantom Menace? Well, the reason this duel is the best of the prequel trilogy is while the trilogy itself has some amazing duels in the saga, the duel in Episode 1 is the most iconic because it was the first time in the Star Wars saga that we saw fights like this between the Jedi and the Sith in their prime. It's fast, it's tense, it gives an amazing adrenaline, and while the movie itself was a bit disappointing for most, you gotta admit this fight alone made the movie. And of course, it had that kick-ass music by John Williams. This was the first time we ever saw what is known as a saber stab, being Darth Maul's lightsaber. And this was also the first time we ever saw two Jedis go against one Sith Lord. Liam Neeson is back for another round of sword-wielding excitement, and you can tell he's improved his physical talent from his work on Rob Roy. But in this case, Rob won't be getting out of this one, unfortunately. Ewan McGregor and Ray Park really show some incredible fighting skills in the final round, and it was definitely satisfying when Kenobi cuts that fucker in half. I saw this movie five times in theaters, and every time Maul fell, the audience cheered with applause. Overall, the Star Wars saga has many great duels, but these two are by far out of this world. And that's why those two duels are the best in the Star Wars saga. So what do you have to say to that, Nick? Hmm? Oh, sorry. I wasn't listening. I was busy watching Shingo Jira. Why, you stupid, half-witted, scruffy-looking, nerf-hurt! So naturally, I'm hyped as hell to ride this damn thing, given my fandom for the giant ape himself. In fact, I could just give you my full in-depth review by filming my first ride-through. In fact, that's not a bad idea. Hang on a sec. Oh my god! Mike, this is so in. cool! <laughs> Trying so hard. Look, I really don't want to overanalyze the thing. I mean, I need time to progress my overall thoughts. Well, I have no choice but to force you then, huh? Got it! Don't disappoint me again. Yes, dear. Equalization between the sexes. Hmm. 
Bob Hopkins? What the hell are you doing? You could have easily spent that day thinking about that offer Disney kept making you for Roger Rabbit 2, but instead, you chose to be in a pointless cameo for our crappy Spice Girls movie. Did they literally just grab you and say, hey, we need a shot for the trailer, Bob? Did you seriously think that much of a fucking look? Get Okay, I don't know what the fuck I should do here. I mean, this movie is driving me nuts. Every single scene is just painful. I don't know, what should I do, girls? You're going to see a doctor. You've been acting like a granola bar. Well, it's not my fault the movie was made so poorly. Besides, I hate granola bars. Don't listen to her. A pit bull with a toothache's got a better sense of humor. Cuter, too. You know what? You're right, Serena. I gotta take this movie on with humor. Thanks. I'll see you guys later. I figured it out. You got meatballs on the sides of your head to go with the spaghetti inside. Oh! <laughs> Run, Drudge! <laughs> they can't get over the fences. That's that's chaos theory. Hey, what's the deal? Uh, it's Jack. Is that so? What's with him? He's angry. Um, well, I <laughs> probably shouldn't have messed with the, with the DS cartridge, but... Before he reviewed the game, he asked me if I could make some improvements to the cartridge for better quality control. The only thing I could find to improve it was a mysterious chip that I placed in the game's system. But that backfired when I later found out that someone had placed an evil aura around the chip. And when I saw that Jack literally ate the chip... Yeah, I mean, I knew it wasn't gonna go well. You idiot! He'll be killed! What do we do then? Well, knowing what he usually reviews, I think the only thing that might tame the beast is... a uh, beauty? I'll do it. One way or another, this has to end here. Jack, the airplane's got him. Oh, officer, it wasn't the airplanes that got him. It was beauty that killed the beast. Alright, Cobra. I've held up my end of the bargain. Now it's time to hold up yours. Aren't you forgetting something? Of course. There's your comrades, all tucked away in that USB. Do with them what you will. I have no use for them whatsoever. I command your policy and commitments, but you have grown naive and soft since the Great War. Choose to forget. And that's why you fail. <laughs> I don't think so. Nice try, you snake. What? Did you honestly think my defenses were that easy to hack, Commander? Thanks to one of Dr. Terawatt's high-class techs, my systems are 100% impenetrable.
an acquired taste in backup. Don't worry. Bring the party to you. It's over, Cobra Commander. Now pack your shit, get out, or surrender. You might have won today, but I am not alone. Remember that. We'll meet again. Save your ammo, boys! Let the coward flee. But now I want to hear from you. What are your favorite Back to the Future moments? Let me know in the comment section below. So until the next video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Films, signing- Jack! Jack, you gotta come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Wait, Brad, what are you talking about? What happens to me in the future? Why the hell do you have a DeLorean? Hey, why didn't you invite me to co-host? Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies. You didn't think I was going to get involved in this? Point taken. Okay, now's not the time, Jack. This letter will explain things. I gotta go fill up my baby with Pepsi. You power your DeLorean with Pepsi? It's a better fuel source than plutonium. Dear Jack, my calculations are correct. You will receive this letter immediately after the DeLorean pulled in the driveway. First, let me assure you that I'm alive and well. I've been living happily in the past few months in the year 1885. The lightning bolt at 1885! September 1885! He's alive! The dog's alive! I mean, he's in the old west, but he's alive! No, wait, wait, wait. We're not actually continuing this. This was a one-shot deal. This was just for laughs. Wait, you're actually taking this seriously? <sighs> for God's sakes, Internet, take a freaking joke. Seriously, just cut. Stop. Cut the cameras. is okay at best, and you're probably thinking it's not the best Kong game given it's on Atari, but there's one major problem with the game. It's a ripoff of Donkey Kong! Oh, you already figured that out? Any idiot with brain trauma from hitting too many bricks more than Mario knows that it's a knockoff. Just thinking about it makes me frustrated to the point where I start sucking at the game and I get pissed off! This game is nothing more than a shameless ripoff of garbage. What do you think, James? It sucks, monkey fuck. I know, right? I'd rather shove King Kong's banana-scented cock up my ass. Hey, bass! Exactly! 